Hey, Foot Clan, it's that time of year. Christmas gifts galore. You've got to go to fantasychamps.com. Prepare your body and your mind for winning a championship. Go right now, get the fantasy football jersey. You can customize your team name, put your name on the back, your favorite number, get this awesome jersey. And then a couple weeks from now, when you get the hashtag Foot Clan title, go get your championship rings, your championship trophies, your championship belts, because you're a champ. At fantasychamps.com, promo code BALLERS to save 10%. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the Playdraft Studios. With your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. What are we doing? I don't know, but I'm so excited. I feel like Kermit the Frog. Yay! Welcome, one and all. Come sit down <laughs> around your transistor radio. We're here to bring the fantasy football goodness once more. It's Tuesday, December 12, 2013. This is show number 409. Wait, what did I just say? You said that the year was, in fact, 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he really? He certainly did. Uh, 2013? Yeah. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. We're but, living in the past. Well, LeSean McCoy's an eagle. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's 2017. This is show 497. Carson Wentz is in high school. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've seen some of those pictures. It wasn't... It wasn't Pretty for Carson in high school. He oh he had some growing pains. <laughs> he was he was with us. He was with nerds. Us. Oh yeah, nice. <clears throat> Welcome uh, to the club, Carson. He had some Accutane. <laughs> oh, I see. I uh, see. I see. Yeah. All yeah. right. Today is waiver wire. We've got waiver wire on the show today. Some news. We'll talk about last night's game and the quarterback streamers. We'll be streaming it today. Giving important. You some, very important. With Carson Wentz going down. Uh, Josh McCown going down. You got to turn. Yeah, McCown was the number seven quarterback before this week. You got to stream against according your to the, streamer to the judge. Yeah. Did you guys? Uh, did you guys see the press conference video of McCown? No, but I heard it was emotional. It was. I mean, it, because it's he's hard. a warrior. He is a warrior. He is a man's man. Not afraid to show emotions. Not afraid to cry up there on the podium. But I mean, if I didn't already love McCown as much as I did, which is maximum. I would love him even more. Mm. You bet your thermometer can't explode? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I might have tuned out for a second. <laughs> for the best. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow the show over at thefantasyfootballers.com. And our community is jointhefoot.com. Become a member of the Foot Clan. Stay with us all year round. Get an extra episode of the show every week and a bunch of other cool perks. We got giveaways. We got good stuff happening over there. And uh, we're doing something special for the holidays. If you're looking to get some some swag, some fantasy footballers gear, we got tons of shirts. We got the draft day is my Christmas shirt. We've got uh, some That's a hot ticket right pop now. Pop culture shirts, and then oh, you can get a fantasy footballers uh, hoodie. It's cold yep. outside. Yeah, yep. I've, I've heard. Cold. I've heard it's cold in some places. Yeah, and uh, you can go to shopballers.com and use the promo code Rudolph. Oh, so festive. So do a little tie in with. The Red Zone Reindeer himself, Kyle Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph's giving you 10% off is what I'm saying. Rudolph is the code. This is directly out of his pocket. At shopballers.com. He's and, got it uh, covered. Before we talk about Tom Brady and what happened last night, one final reminder, footclanvote.com. <laughs> Head over to footclanvote.com. You are wrong. This is not one final reminder because the voting goes. Just for goes, today. A final reminder okay. for today. The voting goes through December 15th. Foot Clan, if you've missed the boat on this one, don't worry. It hasn't left port yet. We need your assistance. This is for the FSTA. It's their social media award, a.k.a. who's got the best fans. And we need you, Foot Clan. FootClanVote.com. Vote for us. Uh, and it's really that easy. Yeah, that's all you do. Yep. All right. So last night's game. Look, I had a little bit of hesitation starting the Patriots D last night. Believe it or not. Because of the amount of points that the Dolphins had put up the week prior when they dominated Denver. And we saw Denver bounce back this past week and play well. Last night, Jay Cutler, 25 for 38, 263 and 3. Kenyon Drake, 25 Kenyon Drake. for 114. Yes. Also their leading receiver with 79 yards. He was so close to a touchdown. He good. And 195 yards to scrimmage. Jarvis Landry was awesome as usual. Eight targets, eight catches. And, 
you know, you even had Devontae Parker getting a little bit of action, four for 40. A little bit. So this offense now, it, when you talk about streaming quarterback possibilities, is Jay Cutler an option against Buffalo next week? I would say yes. Based I mean, on he, how they're playing right now? Yeah, there, there's a lot of options, and Food Clan, I get it. I understand if you are not putting your playoff life in the hands of smoking Jay Cuddy, who does not care about anything. But Buffalo has been so bad. Well, and, and yeah, my, my if only you're gonna put it into Bortles' hands, wouldn't you be willing to put it into Cutler's hands? Maybe no. Um, I <laughs> I would if this were in Miami, where he, you know he he was he was obviously very good this last game in Miami. This. Next week, it's against Buffalo. I like the matchup, but it's in Buffalo. I don't like the weather. I know it's Oh, we're wet. already there? Well, it's, look, we all remember the Snow Bowl this last week, and no, it's not going to be in the middle of a blizzard <laughs> I next seem week. To, I seem but, to recall Sunday. But, I mean, it's yes, all the way back. We all remember the day before yesterday, 2013. Um, <laughs> but the reality is it's still freezing up there. It's not going to be good weather this coming week. It's going to be in the 20s. It's going to be some you know light snow. That's, that's not going to be where I'm putting my fan. Sure. Jay Cutler – in super cold weather, possibly snow is not where my fantasy playoffs are going to. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to hinge my wagon to that. <laughs> it's, it's, Don't it's hinge fair. your wagon. Hint, wait, hitch. There you yes. go. <laughs> yeah. there it well, is. it's all right. You're close. <laughs> yeah. Look, what about the Dolphins' defense? Now, two weeks of playing very well. Uh, you know, they dominated Denver. Put right. up humongous numbers, defensive scores. Now they play New England. Zero third down conversions for New England. Last time this happened was 1991. Incredible defensive performance. Now they go to Buffalo. You might get Nathan Peterman in the snow. Isn't the Dolphins a potential weak winning defense next week that is on every waiver wire? I would actually agree very much with that, but I believe it will be Tyrod Taylor. Nathan Peterman's in the concussion protocol after the big hit, and McDermott, Coach McDermott has said, if healthy, Tyrod will start. I At least that's with, what he said so far. I agree with both of you. I oh. think Tyrod will start, and see, I think Miami's still an okay defense. See where our concussions are now affecting the MLB umpires. What? One of the baseball take umpires. take the face? Well, they do. They get the foul balls off of the helmet. MLB umpire, 58 years old today, he retired because of too many concussions. Wow. He had missed the remainder of the season uh, with a foul ball. Man, so. not going to let my kid be an ump. <laughs> not gonna Too let dangerous. Him, not going to let him grow up to be an umpire? No. Oh, well, you're a good father. All right, what do we do with Tom Brady? I mean, this is... He sucks. If you were counting on a big Tom Brady performance to win you the week... Which we were. Yeah, we were in... R.I.P. Uh, in our uh, Fantasy Pros Dynasty, Dynasty League. Dynasty League. Mm -hmm. Brady, 24 for 43. This is the second time this year I think they've been without Gronk where Brady has really struggled. And this offense has struggled. Obviously, that was a big piece of the puzzle. No Gronk. The other piece was, my goodness, Brandon Cooks. You cannot get off of coverage on Xavier Howard. That's the Brandon Cooks I mean, that we know and love. Seven targets, one catch, and the catch was a breakdown in zone coverage, not on Howard. So he was basically shut down entirely. Now you have confidence issues with the Patriots. They used to be your playoff push, your favorites. Now you've got confidence issues. Do they bounce back in a huge way next week? Is Gronk back? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> No issues. That, it's as simple as that. If they got this, Pittsburgh though, it, in Pittsburgh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Don't it. care. Yeah, do not care. Like, now let me the, ask you this: If Mike, the Patriots, that, if Tom Brady is out, both Gronk and Julian Edelman, we've seen him struggle, and and he was out. We, he was without both last night. So I, I, with Gronk back, I don't have any problems. The week prior, when he played against Buffalo and had Gronk. What was his reason for finishing as the quarterback 28? His The success of the running game, getting the touchdowns? That is true. I mean, I really... That's, it, that's what it is. I it, mean, it looked like it, but it, it's it's worth noting that Brady... I mean, you're going to start him next week. I, I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game because both teams really need the win against the Steelers. But it, it, it makes me question... Both long, teams need to beat the Steelers? Both teams need to get the win. And then you I was said, saying, you know... In the Patriots well, okay, matchup against the okay, Steelers. Okay, but I'm just telling you what you actually said. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> he nailed it. All right, look, so the so the Steelers actually have one more win than the Patriots do now because yep. they lost last night. So this is a fight for the number one seat. So it will be an important game. It'll be an exciting game. 
Uh, no Ryan Shazier, unfortunately, means that that defense is not as stout. Gronk back in the middle of the field, those linebackers. I agree with you, Jason. I do think it'll be a good opportunity. I, I just think that every Carson Wentz owner that's facing Tom Brady is hoping that they can somehow yeah. get this type of a, of a performance. I mean, but the nice you, thing is you might not be facing Tom Brady because yeah, you the Tom Brady teams probably lost. You – just think back to last year, it, and this yeah, may be contradictory. It's just I still would play Brady if I had him. But last year, Andrew Luck did it too. Tom Brady, years ago. Tom Brady tanked your playoffs last year. It's crazy. Don't think about it. He's been the most. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, you got to roll him out there. Yes. So, all right. Let's talk more news. News and notes from around the league. I went to lunch with a friend yesterday. I hadn't seen him in a while. And uh, we're sitting down at the table, and he goes, Oh, Carson Wentz, he tore his ACL. Do you hear that? It's like, yeah, man. Yeah, man, that's all I've heard going through my head over the last yeah. 24 hours. Do you know what I do? <laughs> Carson Wentz confirmed torn ACL out for the season. Now you're talking about whether he'll be on PUP and, or whether he'll even be active to start the year. Yeah, Dr. Is James Andrews. The the OG fantasy. What, is, what are we gonna do when he's gone? I mean, he's yeah. not gonna live forever. Who's the next? Who's the next man up? That that's a, there's a job open. I feel like there's one doctor for ACLs in the world, right. and it's James Andrews. Kids of the world, there's gonna be an opening for yeah. superstar sports medicine. That's right. But Dr. James Andrews said nine to twelve month recovery. You. It just seems like a weird thing to say, though. We've seen players. I mean, coming back from ACLs and quicker than that over the right. last uh, it's like five years. But this doctor, this guy knows his stuff. If you've been in sports for any period of time, you know that name because sure. when a player suffers an injury, they go to him. But he's also the man who worked on Adrian Peterson and took a look and said, "This guy has." I I can't remember the exact quote. It's like he has tendons of a high schooler or something. Basically, was marveling at Adrian Peterson's. Just the innards. I saw Carson Wentz as a high schooler. He doesn't have those tendons. <laughs> right. <laughs> but th my point of that was he was saying great things about Adrian Peterson, about how him being able to recover. He's not and always then, a pessimist. And then Adrian point. Peterson came back and rushed for 2,000 yards the next year. You heard it here first. Wentz, 2,000 yards next year. On the um, ground. On the ground. Uh, look, best wishes to Carson Wentz. It's a heartbreaking thing. He's a great guy, and uh, hopefully he can recover quickly. Nick Foles. We'll talk about streaming quarterback options. He's in consideration. I mean, you have to look at Certainly. him against the Giants this week. With a week of practice, not being thrown into the fire, a great offensive line, Jason, you brought it up yesterday. He needs to be in consideration for streaming options, in my opinion. Josh McCown, broken left hand, needs surgery done for the year. Looks like Bryce Petty will get the out opportunity. This is interesting. Jim Caldwell, you brought it up on the show yesterday. Mike, Amir Abdullah. Was not named the starting running back. Yep. Theoretic. Oh, big time. All big over. Time. Could yes. be a playoff uh, winner. Their team does not look as good with Amir Abdullah. It doesn't. It looks it's better just, with Theoretic. I mean, you at some point, when you're in the playoff hunt and you are right there, you can make some, some waves. You have to do what's best for your team, and you want it. I think everybody there, coaches, players, teammates, general managers, they all want it to be Abdullah. They want to be right with that draft pick. Yeah. And he's looked good in flashes, especially in practice and preseason. But he has not been valuable for them on the field in games ever. And so I think you, I think they have to make the move to Theo. The thing I like about Theo Riddick is he runs the exact same way Devonta Freeman runs. It's like 200% every single play when Theo Riddick is out there. So, look, he's a better player than Amir Bill right now. So I agree yeah. with this situation. It's, it's bold of them to do. Uh, <clears throat> Sean McDermott, as Mike said, Tyrod Taylor going to start – as the quarterback as soon as he's healthy. We'll see what happens this week. Aaron Rodgers owners, if you're oh, wanting him oh. back, I believe he has a, uh, a CT scan this week to, to take a look at the collarbone. They can't put him back out there if he's going to pull the Tony Romo rebreak of the collarbone. Right. And so we don't know whether he's going to play this week. We don't know if that means next week. We're going to have to wait and see. Right now, Carolina is on the docket. So this matchup all of a sudden looks, you know, if you were thinking about streaming Hunley, I'd stay away. But if, if Rodgers is back, what's your opinion on starting? Because people want to know the startability of Aaron Rodgers. That's the question if he's back. I play him. I do as well. Yeah, and I think the reason you do is go look at what happened to Tom Brady last week. And I know that seems like the opposite argument, but it's not. You take your best shot yes. with your best player. Yes. 
And I, I'm with you guys on there's, that. There's very few – I mean, uh, th- there's a handful of quarterbacks I would start over Aaron Rodgers, but I'm not going to take the streaming options. I'm not going to play – uh, Blake Bortles, who I I really like this week, but I'm not playing him over Aaron Rodgers. So the one question that I would what about have a guy about, like Matt Ryan though? Oh, Matt Ryan is just he's a dumpster fire right now. I would I would play him over Matt Ryan. Here's the guy that I have the biggest question, and I, I'm Can't curious your guys your guys' opinion here. It's in the same game. Would you rather have Cam or Aaron Rodgers? That's a very I'm going to play Cam for sure. sure. I think in me that too. game, no uh, doubt. That's about where uh, – when I was looking this up, you know, uh, to, to just get my bearings if Aaron Rodgers plays, that was where my threshold was, was kind of camming up. Right. That uh, Projections go up tomorrow, but my gut tells me I would play Rodgers over Cam. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I don't blame you. But that was – it was close. All right. Let's talk uh, – let's talk waivers. Put me in, coach. I do think we should mention that Alvin Kamara, Super Camario, expects to return next week. What was that? What? Super Camario? Is he? Oh! Oh! You think he's going to come back? No, he's going to shake it off. All right, so we also hope Mixon's back. He's aiming for a week 15 return. Joe Mixon, uh, get back on the field. I, I don't know what to do with that team right now. I mean, they're terrible. Playing, yes. And they're playing, what, Minnesota? In Minnesota? Hey, okay. Hooray! <laughs> Jonathan Stewart, you know, he took care of Minnesota. <laughs> Pick him up. Goodness. With with uh, Kenyon Drake and Alvin Kamara being so good, can you imagine? What, what was the, weren't they all on a college team with uh, the same roster had like four? No, no, Kenyon Drake was the third behind Derrick Henry. Yes, Derrick Henry. And um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Was it Lace? No. Yeah, Eddie yeah, Lace. Lace Lace Lacey. Lacey's from Bama. H- Lacey, Trent Richardson's from Henry, Bama. And Drake were on the same team. Crazy. Yeah. Welcome to SEC football. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk waivers. By the way, I thought that that sentence was so going to end with you tooting your own horn. <laughs> you're like, when you look at Kamara and Drake doing so well. Why? Because ima- I loved both those guys were, coming out. And then you were yeah. going to say, like, just imagine if all my picks were that perfect. Mm-hmm. Which they're not. Thank you for tooting my horn. Yeah. Boy. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't ever thank me for that again. <laughs> all right. Wide receivers. These are probably owned players. Give me your I'm going to I'm going to give you a name. These are probably owned. I just want to know if you would start them if they were available on the waiver wire. Chris okay. Hogan. Yes. No, uh, yeah, I probably would have in Pittsburgh. Sterling Shepard. No. No. Cooper Cup. Yes. Yes. Robert Woods. No. I got it out first. Right. You would not start I Woods? would not start Woods in his first game back. No. I have Robert Woods. I've been trying to make this decision, right. and I just can't have the confidence first game back. Richard Matthews. No. No for me. <laughs> I answered that one myself. Yeah, San Fr- the, the matchup against San Francisco, but still no. San Francisco's feisty right now. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any trust in Mariota. That's my problem. I, I, you know, it's like, give me Delaney Walker and nothing. Right. All right. Uh, uh, you, you left out a name and, and earlier before the show. I was like, oh, we should take him out, but I, I actually thought – over this and Muhammad Sanu, I I would be willing to start this week because of the matchup at Tampa Bay. Oh yeah, yeah. So if they, those are all guys that are seventy percent or above, mostly they're they're your you know keep your eye on the waiver wire just in case you need a spot start. Most teams have a hole somewhere on the roster, and sometimes that's you know you need a spot start at the wide receiver position. So the main waiver wire pickups, the one I'm looking at is hey, can I win a championship on the back of D.D. Westbrook? Can yep. I win it on the back of Marquise Goodwin, who I believe if you project his last five games he's on 1100 yard receiver with Good, 80 receptions Goodwin has been f- fantastic more and like, now that he's more got like great win great win. am I right I love it and and now he's got an accurate quarterback that can get him the ball thanks Brooks he has been oh he's been, Marcus great win of course yeah that's I, I like it it's, it's you of all people Mike you didn't I'm let never, me you did not let me finish oh all right because that's two thumbs way up. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I mean, look at him the last three weeks. He's gone four receptions, it- eight receptions, six receptions. The, the the fewest amount of yards he's had in the last three games is 78, which is great. 99 and 106. Always a chance for the big play. Always. So, I, I mean, you're talking basically four weeks in a row of double-digit performance. Marquise Goodwin shouldn't even be on the waivers. He should have been started two weeks ago and last week and certainly this week. I would start Goodwin... Uh, over 
everyone that we were talking about who might be available. Over Westbrook? D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Goodwin are the two guys that I like the most this week. But Westbrook I would, probably more available. I would lean Goodwin out of those two because Goodwin is the one and there's really no other competition there. Uh, you know, if, if, if it, what we've seen with Keenan Cole and, um, you know, with, with a lot of the other weapons there. Speaking of no competition, mm. let me pause for a second and thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction. There is no one better in the sports memorabilia industry, and they keep getting better. We talked about this a few months ago. Now when you buy a signed jersey, you have the option to frame it mm. in the process of checkout. You want to get that jersey? You want to get that special gift for somebody? It's not as expensive as you think. In fact, it's way cheaper than you think. Listen to this. Yesterday, signed T.Y. Hilton jersey went for $47.50. Wow. 47 bucks. You can get a signed Evan Ingram, 66 bucks. Kareem Hunt, signed jersey, 79 bucks. Tyreek Hill, signed logo football. Mm. Sounds pretty cool. $45. This is ridiculous, guys. <clears throat> and yet, all JSA authentic certified signatures, all authentic products, and you got to go to pristineauction.com right now. P R I S T I N E auction.com. Sign up, free account. Let them know the fantasy footballer sent you. And then, uh, you know, surprise somebody with an awesome Christmas gift. We want to thank Sherry's Berries for sponsoring the show. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife <coughs> loves the dipped strawberries. It's not always time to hit the store. But Sherry's Berries, they make, it, they make it a lot easier. They keep my gift giving on point and they simplify it. This holiday season, our listeners can get fresh and delicious sh uh, Sherry's Berries dipped in white milk, dark chocolatey goodness starting at $19.99 plus shipping and handling or check this out. You can double your berries. Du double your fun, people. Mm. We'll double your berries for just 10 bucks, and you're going to get a free keepsake dessert platter if you double your berries. Plus, Sherry's Berries has more than just berries. They've added new holiday treats like the Snowman Brownie Pops, the Cheesecake Christmas Trees. That have got chocolate truffles. You got to check this out. And the only way to get this amazing $19.99 deal this holiday, you visit berries.com. You click on the microphone in the upper right corner, enter the code BALLERS at checkout. Remember, you can double the berries for just $10 more. Your gift will include that free keepsake platter. That's B E R R I E S dot com. The code is BALLERS. All right. I'm going to keep this going for two days in a row. Do you got the berries to start Mike Wallace, guys? I do. Against Cleveland? I doubled my berries, and I've got <laughs> enough to start Mike Wallace. Because, <laughs> look, over the last couple weeks, Jeremy Macklin has disappeared. Mike Wallace has become the clear number one target. <laughs> you, you know, he had 116 yards two weeks ago, 72 yards this past week, a touchdown four offense weeks ago. Offense is playing better. The offense is moving thanks to Alex Collins and the Cleveland oh, I thought you were going to say Joe Flacco. <laughs> the, no, that was ridiculous. I'll bet if Alex Collins played quarterback, he'd be better. So but still, Mike Wallace has, has been getting it done. We, that's why they call you the Quattro. No, all right. You'll I missed that, it. I let missed it, it sink oh. in. Let <laughs> it sink say? in and watch right, over you. I got it. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> all right, other options. Deeper, deeper <laughs> league options. <laughs> Danny Amendola, Paul Richardson, Corey Coleman. You know, if you need a guy. Let me ask you this. Danny Amendola, he had the 6 for 76, probably a Gronk. product of no Gronk. But would you play Paul Richardson or Corey Coleman over a guy like Deshaun Jackson? Hmm. Deshaun Jackson has Atlanta on Monday night. <sighs> hasn't had that big game yet, right. but hasn't been terrible either. I I probably would go Deshaun Jackson. I'd play DJX over Paul Richardson. And, I'd and play him over Coleman, Coleman for sure. Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. You know, this whole – I'm so upset at this whole Cleveland wide receiver thing. The whole Josh – you, you got issues, bro. Listen, Josh Gordon – He's very good. In, in, in fantasy Twitter mm -hmm. and I would say in, uh, on the, at this set, two-thirds at least – Yes. Are just madly in love with Josh Gordon like he's uh, the best thing since white fudge dipped Oreos. <laughs> but Corey Coleman – oh, man, he's a bum. Yeah, well, I've no. never started court, but that's what it that's seems what like. That's what you hear in your that head. That is what I hear because, I mean, you were just like, oh, no, I wouldn't start Corey Coleman. But before the show, you're like, oh, Josh Gordon, have you seen Baltimore? They gave it up last week. He's going to destroy. I mean, Corey Coleman outproduced Josh Gordon last week. Okay, but how about two weeks ago? Yeah. How was that production? Different games have different production. Right. How about three so weeks ago? Three we weeks have, ago, Corey Coleman was great. You're, but, but here's the thing. 
you're right in the fact that Corey Coleman could outproduce Josh Gordon. Absolutely. I don't think you would disagree with that. No, Mike. I would not. But when you're talking about Browns wide receivers, you're talking about picking one, man. You don't want to pick two. I don't want to pick one, but if yeah. you do, you're picking the big boy. This is all the chips got to go all in on one player. That's exactly right. I'm not going to split and go, man. Light them all up in, hedge, in Cleveland. If I hedge the Cleveland wide receivers, I'm it's sure to work out. That's why. And so it feels it feels like we're disrespecting Corey Coleman, and it's just look, man. We Mike and I spent a lot of time staring at that Instagram picture of Josh Gordon. That's yeah, why. you see them abs. Those <laughs> abs. They won the day. Abs got abs. All I'm On top saying, of more abs. I'm buying two of them from him. All I'm abs? saying is yeah. so, so far this year. So I'll have two at that point. Corey Coleman has played five full games, and he's been good in four of them. There you go. We're overreacting because right. he got goosed uh, in the right, first game let me with ask Josh you Gordon this, back. Let me, it's simple. Um, who would you start, Josh Gordon or Corey Coleman, if you had to pick one? Oh, no one puts Jason in a corner. Yes, I do. I, I mean, look, this is all the right, question. Okay. The face, the face says it all. Who you got? Let's put a water bet already this week. <laughs> I'm going to Corey Coleman. You go Josh Gordon. Water bet. Give me a Josh uh, Gordon bet every week. I, I, I want this bet bad, and I will take the bet, even though my answer would probably be Josh Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I still want the bet. All right. Running back options. These are the probably owned, but if they're somehow there, my goodness, pick them up. It's all obvious, guys. Rex Burkett, Alfred Morris, Kenyon Drake, Jamal Williams. They're all in the 70% range. If they're there, what you do is you sign them, the fact and then that you, you cock your head back and laugh. That they're it, not over 85% owned of have to all be, four It has of to be dead guys. leagues for the majority of that. I guess. Main waiver wire pickups where we're going to focus our attention right here, right now. To me, it's Mike Davis, Theo Riddick, Jonathan Stewart. Yeah, th those are some of the better names, but it's Mike Davis than a tear break for me. He is the guy that I think he he, he doesn't need someone to stay injured, you know, like uh, say a Gio Bernard that will be good if Mixon is out of the way, or Theo Riddick if Abdullah is not involved. And it's not like even, even in Gio, let's say Mixon misses this week. Well, Mike Davis is the starter. Plain and simple. I also like the matchup against the Los Angeles Rams, who are pretty good against wide receivers, but have been giving it up to running backs. And they they weren't very good against wide receivers against. Well, sure, Carson Wentz three quarters has, of Carson has Wentz done either. that to almost everybody. I mean, he threw a touchdown with a torn ACL. Right. So kudos, Carson. Uh, but Mike Davis, and he's also passed the eyeball test. He's looked really, really solid uh, last week in a tough matchup. Fifteen for sixty six. I, I I like Mike Davis. He would be my main pickup. I this can't week. believe you get you did not even list Kerwin Williams. He was coming. No, those are the main well, guys to me. Right, but, but I Kerwin Williams is one hundred percent in that main list of pickups for me. Okay, I, that's fair. But he fits what Jason was just saying. Theo needs Abdullah out. Geo needs Mixon out. Kerwin needs a Peterson out. Okay, that's fair. I just so, I've I've written Peterson off. You don't think he's playing? I don't. So, but which is a, a factually incorrect thing to do. Peterson could come back. I just I feel like he is okay gone. So Kerwin had 20 carries last week for 73 yards and caught a pass. Yeah. Has Washington in Washington this week? Certainly in the list. Kerwin certainly is, deserves it. Kerwin has been a beast, man. He 73 yards last week. No inefficiencies aside, still 20 carries for 73 yards for a waiver wire guy. The week before that, 16 for 97. You know who I want to start? It may seem crazy, but I want to start Rod Smith. Really? I want to take a shot on Rod Smith. Rod Smith is 13% owned. So if you're in a deep league and those guys we just mentioned are yeah, signed. Yeah, it's got to be super deep. I want it, but look, the way that they're playing right now in Oakland, I think I mean, Rod Smith's on the field a decent amount of time. Can you get a – I'm pulling it up. Pull a snap count situation out. I just – I looked up at that game. Rod Smith was in there. He caught five passes for 113 and a touchdown. 46%. There you go. That's that's a playable running back. If I told you Alfred Morris was out there, who's 85% on, you'd go get him. But Rod Smith is 13% on. He's not on. No, and, and he's been good. He's been good on the ground, and he's been great uh, through the air. So I, I, I don't blame you at all. I think Rod Smith, if you're a team that um, is still in the playoffs and you're in desperate need, Rod Smith has certainly has a higher ceiling than some of the other uh, players, you know, that's where it's like if I'm a big underdog, would you rather play Rod Smith or would you rather play Kerwin Williams or Jonathan Ker Stewart? Kerwin and Jonathan Stewart. Okay, yeah, I might, I might lean Rod Smith over Kerwin. I don't, I don't think Kerwin has the same type of upside. 
he's he's a jag with opportunity. I yeah. agree. I agree. Um, it's a big opportunity, though. Super, now let me, super let me, deep. Go let ahead. Me ask this, because Jonathan Stewart, he was your rising star, Andy. Yes. Uh, yesterday had the monster game, now plays Green Bay in a pretty good matchup. Yes. Would you rather start, for, forget who you're picking up, um, would you rather start Jonathan Stewart or Mike Davis? <clears throat> well, <laughs> I, I want to say Davis. Because even though Stewart had the three touchdown outlier week, I look at I look at Jonathan Stewart as a twelve to fourteen point guy. And for Mike Davis, at least I'm you know, if I'm a favorite, I'm playing Jonathan Stewart. If I'm an underdog, I'm playing Mike Davis. Yeah, I I, I wanted to bring that up because it's it's close. It's extremely close. I think you could go either way. So when I say it's Mike Davis and then everyone else, Jonathan Stewart's available most places. He's a very fine start. And let's say he comes through. Let's see he has a good game against Green Bay. You know, he's had uh, touchdowns in the last three games. Let's say he makes it four. The following week is against Tampa Bay yeah. in your championship. So Jonathan Davis's Stewart odds to is, score are much lower. is way up. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, so, it's, it's Jonathan Stewart. The the touchdown upside for Mike Davis, I think, is just so very small. With, yeah, that with, that's true. Because they even you know he, it would have to be a twenty yard yes touchdown. Because yes. once they get inside the five, it's Jimmy Graham time. They don't even try and run it in. All right, tight ends, man. Tight ends are hurting. I I do want to mention Peyton Barber as a as a guy to watch yet again. I know, but Doug Martin was awful, and Doug Martin was benched for fumbling. And then Peyton Barber came in and was far more efficient. Twelve for fifty-eight, caught a pass for five yards. Uh, so he's he will be a name to monitor as well. All right, at the tight end position, I'm not excited about very many guys. You could go at Vernon Davis again and play that with that fire. Two for twenty-six and a touchdown on seven targets. Eric Ebron had a very very surprising game. Ten for ninety-four. I mean that that kind of quantity. But now you got Chicago. How much are they throwing the ball? I don't know. And then Trey Burton is out there. He had the monster week, but he seems like fool's gold to me without Carson Wentz. Yeah, it's a it's a rough week. Uh, you have guys like Steven Anderson and Cameron Brait last week that looked like their time had come. Both guys let you down. If you actually look at the snap percentages for Cameron Brait, it was all O.J. Howard. And so we might have been led astray by those two touchdowns Jameis Winston threw in his first game back with Cameron Brait because Cameron Brait did not uh, get as – he was just simply not as involved as O.J. Howard. Um, so, yeah, when it when it's – you know, if you need a guy, you know, let's say you – I think O.J. Howard is worth a shot because O.J. Howard's snap percentages are so vastly higher than Cameron Brait's. Brait's touchdown the week before I think was an – an outlier based on the fact that, look, he came back, we were excited, but he's not been on the field nearly as much as Howard. I think Howard you could take a shot with. We had, what, six, seven key tight ends put up gooses last week? Yeah, yeah I was just looking at the top 12 from last week. Check these names out. Trey Burton, one. Jared Cook, two. Number three, Jesse James. Garrett Selleck was four. Number six was Adam Shaheen. Seven was Eric Ebron. Nine was O.J. Howard, and, and 11 was Rhett Ellison. So it was, it was absolutely fine if your tight end stunk last week because so did your opponents. Yeah. So we know the Giants in the, the, what, the Browns, they can't cover the tight end. That is correct. So you've got Burton and Watson in that situation. Watson's the or leading. Ertz. Well, yeah, say Burton or needs Ertz. Ertz to be out, which he could be out again. Yeah, we'll see. He had the headache last week. We'll, we'll know more this week. You don't have any lack of confidence in Ertz then at that point because you don't have anybody else you can turn to. If Ertz is back, you play Ertz. Correct. Okay. Is there anybody else that's kind of like a, I'm going to take my shot with them guy? I mean, Seals, Seals Jones last week was targeted. They just couldn't connect. Yeah. I mean, it's the tight end is so gross. Most, yeah. Most of the guys that I, I look at and I go, you know, I, I really do like, say, a Hunter Henry who's really come on strong. He's he's just probably not available on your waivers. No, he's not. Now, that being said, I would, I would guess that the majority of teams left in the playoffs, they have – they have found a way to grab a Jack Doyle and Evan Ingram, a Hunter Henry at least, and and you guys probably aren't desperate for tight end need. If you are, then you just got to swing for the fences. You you just got to go go big. Maybe maybe look at Jason Witten. Jason Witten has been pretty solid the last three weeks. Has a decent matchup coming up against Oakland, and is is still available in you know some leagues. 
All right, you guys want to talk streamers? Let's do it. Full stream ahead. All right. It's go time. Carson Wentz owners, Josh McCown owners. What are we doing? Who are we turning to? Who's your favorite streamer of the week? And then we'll talk about some other options beyond that. Yeah, and I want to I want to point out as well, it's not just if you're the Carson Wentz owner or the Josh McCown owner. If you are going up against the Carson Wentz owner or the Josh McCown owner, take some of these guys out. Uh, I know I was looking at that in you know a league I had a buy in, and I'm I, the Carson Wentz owner almost made it through, and I was ready, man. I was ready to just I'm going to pick them all up and say, go ahead, <laughs> start start your garbage. <laughs> so, favorite stream this week? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what's been working, Case Keenum. You actually have my favorite stream this week, Case Keenum at home. I, yeah, I I don't know, you know, his ownership percentage is right around fifty to sixty, depending on what league you're playing in. So he may be a little bit of cheating here, just slightly above halfway owned, but don't care. <laughs> if you can get him, start him. Home against Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati's kind of given up on this season. We saw this last week. Mitch Trubisky <clears throat> dissected this Cincinnati defense. I don't know if Vontez is coming back. I don't know how much Oof. that hurt last week. But Case Keenum at home against Cincinnati, he's my uh, – I think he's my favorite streamer this week. Yeah, I, I have him in a league where I was considering, do I want to pick up, take a run on the waivers at Blake Bortles, who's my stream of the week, or do I want to roll with Case Keenum? This is push come to shove. It's in my matchup. I chose Keenum because he has just been <clears> – <throat> he's been too good. <clears throat> his so good. weapons <laughs> he's are – stuck in your throat. His weapons, I, I think, are superior. The offense has been better. The defense is going to make sure that I mean, they're going to be able to play their game. I really love – Case Keenum, and if you're playing in six point, you know per touchdown leagues since the bye week, which is we're talking, about, it was a while ago. This is what Keenum's put up: thirty one points, nineteen, thirty one, twenty, twenty three. Pretty safe. Yeah, he's been safe with some ceiling. But like I said, my streamer is Blake Bortles. I think that's another guy you could pick up. He's owned in far fewer leagues. He's only twenty percent owned on ESPN, and he's another guy that since the bye. I mean, he had one bad game against Cleveland, 10 points. Aside from that, he's been in that 18 to 28 range the last few weeks, 22, 28, 21. That's fine for a quarterback you're picking up off of waivers. And he plays Houston. Houston has been 28th on the season against quarterbacks. They've got a good run, D, but their their secondary is, is just trashed right now. I mean, we saw last week. Garoppolo put up 334 points and a touchdown. Whoa, 334 points. 334 yards and a touchdown. But uh, I think Houston is a good matchup. Blake Bortles is good. Garoppolo's good. Mike, who's your stream? Well, I must say, I do like Keenum and Bortles more than this guy, but I still have a large amount of faith in the aforementioned very handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. Jimmy Garoppolo, this guy is... I believe in Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that he is a legitimate quarterback. We have two games with him under Kyle Shanahan's control as the leader of the 49ers, 293 yards, 334 yards. So they are going to air it out. Uh, Marquise great win, as <laughs> who has been dubbed. Marquise awesome win, whatever you want to go with. They have, they have an instant connection already. He gets a take on the Tennessee Titans, who – they're they're an okay. They are an okay defense, but I think that Jimmy G is good for near 300 yards. He has it. It'll be the touchdowns. It'll will it will come down to that. Can you get two out of him? I think it's it's in the realm of uh, things that are very possible this week. But once again, I would rather play Bortles or Keenum. But I still love Jimmy Garoppolo if things are a little sketchy on that waiver wire. One of the things I like about the Keenum situation is Wentz's final act was kind of getting them that win, and there's still a fight for that one seed. Right. Um, if you're looking deeper, I want to retract my earlier question because I insinuated he would be a good start. Because the game's in Buffalo, I'm going to take Cutler off the table with right. the weather situation or at least put him way down the list. Um, Deshaun Kaiser had a big week last week, plays a Baltimore defense that's – Genuinely, yeah. normally great. Yeah, I mean it was. But, it's a one week thing. But for I mean Corey Coleman, how do you stop him? And then you've got Gordon on the other side, <laughs> right? Uh, so I do think Kaiser well, is like Corey Goldman. Goldman, 
Right. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you Boy. leave the goat jokes to this guy. <laughs> Honestly, I was really surprised that it wasn't a Marquis goat win. I think you'd look at Nick. We had already named him. I think you look at Nick Foles. I really do. You, you'd put your trust. What it, Mike, you brought up, uh, or you both were talking. Keenum's weapons are the yes. argument for Keenum. Yes. Well, you've got to make that type of argument for Foles with a week of practice and the matchup against the Giants. The Giants got eviscerated even on short passes. Look at the air yards for Dak Prescott last week compared right. to his total yardage. I think that, look, you get the ball into Ajayi's hands, Clement's hands. You get the ball in Ertz's hands, Jeffrey, Aguilar. I think Aguilar is the guy. We've seen him this year break some you know, simple passing routes off and just dominate secondaries with yards after the catch. This seems like a perfect matchup I for that. I, I agree could, with Foles. could be a sneaky snart, guys. Mm. A sneaky maybe snart. A, maybe a DFS Coles Aguilar stack. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> scary. Ooh. Scary <laughs> times. All right, let's get into the mailbag. Mailbag. Well, we are in the mailbag. We love to help you out. That's what we do. This show is all about your team and getting you to that final game, getting you that hashtag Foot Clan title. And as we approach show 500, I just want to give a shout out to all the jointhefoot.com supporters. What up? That have helped make this show. Are you a Foot Clan supporter, Mike? No, I'm saying uh, saying hello to it's, them. It really sounded like a response. Whatever. I, I mean, like, I want to say hello. What up? To be fair, <laughs> I support this show with my whole heart. Yes. <laughs> fair enough. And he supports the supporters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With um, with Vom. my heart as well. So we, we want to help you out, and uh, we're always listening to how we can improve the show and make everything uh, The Fantasy Footballers brings you even better. If you want to submit your question, go to the site, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial a voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. That's 302-464-TFFB. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. This question is from Jeff in Boston. My name is Jeff. <laughs> Do I bench A.J. Green this week? He's one of my best players, but his matchup against Xavier Rhodes scares me. What should I do? Clearly, I love Xavier Rhodes as I pump the brake on Devin Funches, who made me look the fool with the absolutely broken play touchdown. Yeah, other than that, Funches was held very much in check. But A.J. Green, you play A.J. Green every week regardless of the matchup. you agree with that, Jay? I completely agree. A.J. Green you is going to – You wouldn't play a player like Crabtree against Dallas? I would not. A.J. Green, his upside is just it, – it's it's too high. I mean, look, last week he was the third best wide receiver out there. Four weeks ago he was the fourth best wide receiver. A couple weeks before that he was the number one wide receiver on the week. You're talking about a guy who can – his ceiling is championship. And if you look at – you know, since – so two weeks ago in Cleveland he really disappointed – he was a 34th wide receiver on the week, and that you know that's not the AJ Green you want. But outside of that one single game, you have to go back to week two of the season where he was not a wide receiver two or better. Hmm. AJ Green has been safer than he has usually been this season, and he's still giving you those is that you, games. Is that you throwing out the Ramsey game? Because he only had oh, one point against Jacksonville. Yes, sorry, but he did get thrown out Whoops. of that game. All right, so you play him. <laughs> All right, Ty in Syracuse has a question. What's your opinion on having a significant amount of players on your team in one game, especially when it's in the playoffs? For example, I have Rivers, Gordon, Kareem Hunt, and the Chargers D. Is this uh, too many, or should I hope for a points-on-the-clock kiosk scenario? No, this it's it's fine. If you buy into that game, like look at uh, uh, the, the Eagles game, the Eagles-Rams game, if you had players in there, you were – pretty happy with the amount of points that we're scoring this so it, it does not bother me to overstack into one game all right here's a question from richard in new york city new york, york city. city with wins out is alshon jeffrey effectively a wide receiver too should i start juju over jeffrey juju against the patriots or jeffrey without wins in the playoffs next week that's a very interesting question i would go with jeffrey Man, I saw Foles target Jeffrey early. Jeffrey's a big target that helps uh, a quarterback stepping in there. I don't know if I have the confidence in Juju the way that Brown and Bell and Big Ben are kind of in sync. I haven't seen 
I don't think Juju's done enough for me to play him over Jeffrey. It's really, really close, but I I would agree not not enough to play him over over Jeffrey. He both guys are in that same range to me. That wide receiver two, maybe the wide receiver three, you know, low end wide receiver two range. All right, this question is from Dom in Madison, Wisconsin. Hey guys, have Lamar Miller as my RB two after the disappointing <sighs> performance Sunday. Against the 49ers. Now he's going up against Jacksonville. What are your thoughts on benching him for Mike Davis? Oh, that's a good question. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. It's gonna be it's gonna be rough. Yes. For Houston. For TJ Yates, uh we expect TJ Yates to quarterback for the Houston Texans. It's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a real long day. I, I'm in the semifinals in our league of record, and my opponent has the Jacksonville defense, and I am <laughs> I am just not pleased. No, I, I, they're going to count as like a quarterback this week. That's the way it's it's looking. So, um, all right, that is it for today's episode. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Fantasy Footballers, for subscribing, listening to the show. Just a reminder, stay with us year-round. We'll get you ready for next year as well, and we'll start in January. So, draft.com slash ballers. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.